Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and I am back with another home project. So once again, we are not at my house, we are at my mom's house. And if you watched the last project, we just finished painting this room sea salt with my new Wagner Easy Paint Stick. It was really awesome. We got this whole room done, two coats of really high quality paint in five hours with just me and my mom. So I will call that a big success. Um, today, we are going to be addressing these janky top parts because we did not paint all the way up to the molding because we are going to be extending that molding. So we are actually going to be painting a strip right under the molding and then putting up another smaller piece of molding under that to take these moldings from little too big. The baseboards in this house, this is a hundred year old house. So the doors, the molding around the doors, the baseboards, it's all very impressive. And then they lowered these ceilings from 12 foot to nine foot 10 or 20 years ago. And so the really impressive moldings is actually three feet up. These are the new moldings that they installed when they did that remodel. So we are going to be beefing these up to look more like the original moldings that you can see in other parts of the house. It would be nice if we could pop the ceiling back up, but that is a huge project that nobody has time or money for today. So instead, we're just going to beef up the moldings and I will show you how to do that. It should be a fairly, knock on wood, that's not wood, <laughs> fairly easy project. Um, and then we are actually going to be installing a beautiful antique fireplace on the other side of the room. Now it is not the actual fireplace, it is the mantle. Um, so that will be a third video. So if you wanna watch the way this entire room has come together from start to finish, there'll be a three part little mini series. I will leave all the links below. But for today, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start cutting our molding and I watched some YouTube videos. I will link them down below, but this is how the guy said find the angle. So this is the first wall we need to cut. He said take a scrap piece of wood, put it in the corner, take another scrap piece of wood, put it on the other wall in the corner. Now you could go by a angle thing, but the whole point is we don't want to. We only have two walls that have weird angles. So now, can you get down here, Mom, and show them what this is doing here? So now we've got this board and this one, and right here, this is what we need to, to draw. All right, make sure it goes all the way off the board here. Okay. Okay. So now what he said to do is take a straight edge and mark from here to the corner. Make sure it's really on the corner and right to that edge. Mark that. And this is our angle. So this we're going to go put on the miter saw and we're going to cut this angle and then we'll cut the molding to this angle on both sides. And supposedly that will work. Okay. We're going to go try it. All right, y'all, so our big miter saw has decided not to miter. So we are going to use the old school one since we're not doing too many cuts. So as you can see, we have set it up so that we are right on top of that line that we drew inside and we are going to cut that. All right, so there's that cut. Now, I'm supposed to cut. What did we say? The, the same angle on this, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So there you go. Take it inside. And There's the angle. You can see this is where we made our measurement. So we're gonna take it inside, put it on the wall, see how it goes. Okay, so 
Here's the piece with the, the line. Here's the opposite piece. And that totally works. Now this, I mean, this is an old house. So this angle, you can see this seam itself is wonky all the way down. So it's not going to be perfect like it would in a newer built house, but you can see that angle is pretty tight and we will be able to cock the difference, I believe. Yeah. So we are going to go ahead and go cut the actual trim pieces to these angles. Okay. Okay, so now we have clamped the trim on. We measured nine and three eighths, seven, seven eighths, which is the length from our wall to our corner. Here's the mark to the outside angle. It is the same angle that we cut this piece to. So theoretically, we are good to go. We've clamped everything down. Go ahead and take a picture, Mom. steadier that way. We're, we're experts at this mitering business, obviously. So, you know, we'll just whip it out. All right. So then we're going to get another one and the opposite. And we need the opposite end. So we're going to cut instead of the big side up, this time we'll be cutting with the small side up, right? Yes, yes. Because yes. we still have to cut on exactly. this side. Right. Exactly we can't right. just do it on this side or they won't be the right angle. Oh. You gotta flip it upside down or twist your saw. And it's better to do but it. But we already have this angle set. So flip it upside down. We're only gonna cut off a little bit because we need this whole length for the wall. So I'm gonna clamp it. And then for this one, are you holding it? Yeah. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna help support. So you get started on the sign and then I'll help. And then let's turn it over. And we'll see if our angles fit. They do because we're geniuses. Yeah, keep it up. <laughs> this would obviously be a million times easier with the electric miter saw. We don't have the budget to go grab another one this month. The one mom has is. And there's only a couple of angles. Yeah, from Facebook. It's not even from the store. So one day we'll get us a professional miter saw. Okay. Since we're only doing one room and a couple angles. You don't always have to have the biggest, fanciest thing to do a project. All right, it We're is what set. it is. All right, y'all. So, first piece fits. We're gonna just tape it right here. Here's our second piece. And obviously we're gonna have to like level these when we do them for real. They still have to be painted. We're just doing a dry fit right now. It fits, like I said, that that angle could be better. And I think that's just the difference in your wall. I can't see anything with your, and your angle. I know, but I can't exactly move them on a ladder. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, I mean, you can see there is a little gap here. You have a straighter wall. I think you'll have less problems for our methods. We will go ahead and just cock in there when we cock underneath, but I think that's good. So we are going to go ahead and cut the piece for down there, measure it, cut it, and we're just gonna work our way around the room, cutting and dry fitting everything. And then we'll paint this, paint these, put them up with the brad nailer, the whole nine. But essentially, That's step one. Method. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cuts there, total. There's where it's gonna be fun. Yeah, that corner is gonna be just as fun. The rest of these cuts should be true 
45 degree 45 angles. degree angles so it yeah. should be easier okay all right okay so now we're cutting the next piece we've got our straight side this corner we know is going to be 45 degrees for all the other corners so we're going to go ahead and cut that and then we'll cut 45 for the next piece it's going to be a lot of 45 degrees for the next like eight cuts so i'm going to go ahead and time lapse this now that we kind of know what we're doing kind of know what we're doing and it's all going to be the same thing over and over and over so okay Okay, y'all, so now we are cutting the piece that's going to go instead of inside the corners up to the, the wall around the fireplace. I'll show you when we get inside. But essentially, we've been cutting inside corners and now we are going to cut an outside corner. So instead of flipping it over and cutting the second angle upside down, we are going to cut the same angle that we did on the back on the front, that way it wraps around that fireplace part, okay? She marked it on the opposite side because she's used to doing the opposite side. bring it inside and we'll show you guys hopefully it's perfect all right so now you can see the angles here and the angles the same one here so we're going to go this is going to be an inside corner and that's an outside, outside corner, corner. So the two pieces here will meet like this and wrap around the corner yes. as opposed to meet in the inside. inside. They're just not going to do it because that's the wrong angle. Meet here. <laughs> <laughs> inside, outside. All right, let's go show you in the inside of that. So here we are, this is the wrapper on the fireplace and you can see the normal angle in the corner and then the same angle on the side here and that will meet up with the next piece and actually wrap around the fireplace. So I hope that makes sense can see the difference. So now we're gonna have to cut this piece with two outside cuts, one on each side. So let's measure that and keep on cutting. We are only going to that corner board. So we are, we are so close to done y'all. We can taste it. We can taste it.
Mom, tell everyone where you were laughing so hard on that oh, step stool. I forgot. What was it? Tell us, Jim. No, I know, but what was the joke? So Jim came in and we asked him to go get a board or a couple boards so that we can make a spacer. Make a spacer. So when we're putting these up with the nail gun, we know they're in equal distance and we can level them and it'll be easier. Blah, 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 blah. So he came in and he said he had a variety of boards. And I said, so would you call that a smorgasbord? And mom got fell off the ladder. But, but that's because that's a gym joke. That's a gym joke. All right, y'all, so we're going to go ahead and measure this angle. Similar to the first angle we did, this is not 45 degrees. Well, it's not a 90 degree angle, so we can't just cut 45 degrees. So we've got our two spare pieces of wood. We'll put the first board square to your first wall, and the second one is going to go square to the second wall. Now you're going to take your pencil, and we're essentially going to trace from corner to corner on either side of this board. So all the way and all the way. I'm gonna get down and then I will show you what it looks like down there. We just can't measure down there. So two I'm seconds. Okay, so we're at the floor now and I'm just going to show you what I did up there. But essentially this, this house is a hundred years old. So just none of the walls are square or the same dimensions even from the floor to the ceiling. We measured on the bottom of the wall a few times, and when we went to put the boards up up top, they were completely the wrong dimensions. So we have learned you need to measure where the moldings go in, not where it's easiest to reach. So here's our boards. And what I did up there, square to the wall, square to the wall, and then I drew on either side of this board. So square, square. So that leaves us with this right here. So now what we're gonna do is gonna take a straight edge and we're gonna go from this corner to this corner. And we're going to draw that line right there. And that is our cut line. So the one we just drew. And we are going to cut that and then we will flip it over and do the other side. And that looks, to me, almost straight, so. That's kind of weird. We're gonna see how it works. I don't see how. <laughs> Guy on YouTube said it would work, so. Yeah, it's on the internet, it it's must be on true. on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> it yeah. worked on the other side, let's go try it. He didn't steer us wrong the first time. Okay. Let's go. All right, y'all, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up and then we are going to readjust it so that our saw is on this angle. So this is one we wanna cut, so. Let's see if I can do it with minimal hands. You need about three hands to do this. You really do. I think it's you're close, little. but we're a little off there. That looks right. Don't you think? Okay, yeah. Okay, so the saw that we have just locks in place at a few angles, 90, 75, 60, 45. The first angle we did must have been one of those. So we ended up just having to hold it in place and saw it. So we got the two angles right here Technically, when we do this, we should cut another one here, and that should go around our angle. So we're gonna take it inside and see now, does this go around our angle? Okay. Hey okay, y'all, so we come to you from the future. We came back in, I just did the same exact thing here. Where's the other piece of wood? So this is what we showed you that I measured and that we just cut outside. And you can see how this and this are the same angle, but look at how different where we cut versus the new angle I just 
sh um, drew here is. And when I use this and this, these two pieces that I cut, this angle, 0% goes around this wall. Yeah. And we didn't think it would from the beginning because to go around an outside wall, needs more this angle. angle needs to be more, more um, slanted than straight out. So I think the problem here that we had was when I did this one and I showed you, I used this piece of wood and another piece of wood that's outside that's skinnier. These are the same width. These are literally the two boards I used on the other side of the wall. Mom chopped them with the chop saw so we could reuse them. So I think the moral of the story here is you need to use two scrap pieces of wood that are the same width or the angle does not come out right. So we are going to go cut this angle right here and then we will come back in and see if it fits around this wall. If it does not, I'm gonna need y'all to send help. Seriously. Serious, serious help. Okay, this worked. So right here, here's the other side. Goes around the, the corner. Perfect. Perfectly. So that is exactly what we needed. We need to use two scrap boards that are the same size. We're hoping. That's it. That's our story and we're sticking <laughs> so to we're it. We're going to now go outside <laughs> and we're going to replicate this with the molding. This is literally like the last two pieces. The last two pieces. And you can tell the sun is going down. So y'all about to be watching us work in the dark because we Wait. can't we can't do this for the next week. We gotta get it up. All right. So let's go. Bye. So there's the first piece. It's perfect. And here's the second piece. And there's that angle. And so we are going to make it work. It is very close. It would be way better on a miter saw where you could lock in the proper angle. We had to really fudge this bad Fudge way. it, but it is going to work. We'll yeah. brat it in. Putty it up. Close enough for government work. Well, once we get the tape down, too, that'll help. Yeah. Okay. So we actually don't need to tape these up. We can just start taking them down and numbering them. And then painting them. Yep. So, all right, let's get to that part. Where's the, where's the butt pencil? The ear pencil? The pocket pencil? I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> all right, y'all. So as you can see, the sun is starting to go down. So we are going to hurry. I've got my Wagner here and we are going to spray the fireplace mantle and the molding. So you might see this little clip in both videos, but hopefully you're watching both videos anyways. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna fill this baby up. We're gonna spray everything continuously so we have a nice smooth even coat. And I have to grab my respirator. Okay guys, so as you can see, we've got the big lights out um, and it is, I mean, it is dark outside, like literally black outside. Is your camera still time lapsing? That's going to be the longest time lapse ever. Maybe, I'll check it. So mom, mom videoed painting all the way around and now we're going to go ahead and put the painted trim up with the brad miller and then we'll cock it, I guess, and we'll be done for the night with that part. But uh, we're getting close. We just we just want to be done at this point. Oh my god! <laughs> it's looking really good, but uh, there's just only so much you can take. We also were worried 
that the new white paint and the old white paint, one would be brighter than the other, and the new white paint is 100% brighter than what's on the trim. So probably going to have to repaint the trim. I'm not doing that tonight. It looks good enough. We also will not be shining these bright lights on it all the time. So that helps. All right, come on over here, Mom. Mom's taking a break. Oh. I gotta get the bread mailer. Yeah, you do. I might have to take a break while you do that. So we are doing this part first because these two corners around the TV part, around the fireplace part, are kind of the most prominent part that you see. This is going to be the focal wall. Unfortunately, the TV's on it, so that's what happens. The fireplace is here, like this is the focal wall. So we want this part around that uh, ceiling there to be lined up the best. Starting there. Then we'll go to the corners. So, once we get it lined up, I've got my 18 gauge brad nailer, and this is what we we'll use to attach the trend to the wall. Alright, so now we're going to go in the ditch. Shoot it straight in. Love it. Going. So, this is piece three, mod numbered, starting here. One, two, three, all the pieces as we took them down. You tell them, Mom, because I'm facing yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, because we, um, the thing. we had, uh, when we dry fitted everything and I took it all down, I numbered everything so that we knew exactly where it went up, because sure enough, it would not be in the right place if we hadn't have done that. And then when I took it out, we took it out to paint it, I even put like one wall together, another wall together. So All right. it, was e it was just easier. And if you were really good at your cuts and really confident in your work, you might not need to dry fit it and then take it down. But this is the first time we've done this. I think we did a good job, but we wanted to be confident that we had it all right before we painted it and put it up. All right, I'm gonna go down to the edge. All right, y'all. Spacers. You get more than the idea, so I am going to turn the camera on fast time. Too fast. Too fast.
All right, y'all, so the molding is done. It turned into a nighttime project, and we can start it popping and painting the trim last night at like 8, and we went until like 10, 30, 11, which is not bad, but oh my god. I mean, you guys saw the video. I have sit down 12 million times. My feet were going numb. Never had that problem before, but it was worth it. I think it takes, like, the paint for this room changed drastically from that old bowl to this beautiful sea salt. I will leave the link for that below if you want to watch that first video where we painted that easy uh, paint roller stick. It was amazing. But between that and the trim, like, the trim just took it to the next level. We could have obviously painted up to the original trim and left it, and that would have been great. This is just the cherry on top of the sundae. It turned out so good. And I I mean, I just use my little black and sprayer to spray all the molding. It looks fabulous even after I had to paint the top trim. It all looks great. So I hope you guys liked it. Obviously, we're gonna go try to get that fireplace in and finish the room. Won't that be amazing? Especially because today is actually like December. Third, so almost a better Christmas tree up. And the fireplace is the last thing we have to do before we put the fireplace up. So we said that long. Fireplace is the last thing we have to do before we put the Christmas tree up. So let's hope we get it done today. Either way, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all the things that are important. I will see you in the next video. Bye.